Hi, this is Marcia. And this is Kelly. We are the two U's of Two U's Fiber Adventures. Thanks for stopping by. You'll hear about knitting, spinning, dyeing, crocheting, and just about anything else we can think of as a way to play with string. We blog and post show notes at Two U's fiberadventures.com and we invite you to join our two use fiber adventures group on Ravelry. I'm 100 projects and I am better in motion. We're both on Instagram and Ravelry and we look forward to meeting you there. Enjoy Enjoy the the episode. episode. Good morning, Marsha. Good morning. Do I sound like a free woman? You sure do. (laughs) Yes. I'm free. I'm free. Grades are in. Oh my gosh. The, um, I don't, next time I tell you, oh yeah, we can record, um, on Friday, December 9th when it's the weekend before finals week and I'm having a cookie exchange party all day on that Monday And then Mm -hmm. I'm giving finals the rest of the week. And then I'm grading finals the following weekend. Like, if I say, oh, yeah, let's, we can record and I can post it. Just tell me I'm crazy. Okay. (laughs) Let me write this down. (laughs) Put a post a note on the wall to remind you. You are delusional if you think that's going to work. Oh, my gosh. So, but we're here on time. Right. This is our regular recording. Yes, and, I, and yes, and uh, full disclosure, we've always we already talked about an hour. I know <laughs> we started recording <laughs> because it was uh, um, we have the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or or let me rephrase that: you have the time. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, it's really yes. nice. And I, I have to say, I also I was walking Enzo, listening to the last episode, and. I wanted to go on the record. I have the Christmas spirit now. I have the holiday spirit. Me I'm too. Back on track. Yeah, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad for both of us. Yeah. The for me, yes. it was the cookie exchange that I did mm-hmm. for work. I just invited the whole everybody to participate if they wanted to, and we had about twenty people, and they just dropped by cookies in the morning on their way to work, and then came back either at lunchtime or, you know, mm-hmm. at the end of the day to pick up their cookies and. Mm-hmm. Chit chatted, and I had music going in the other room the whole day. And we had eggnog and coffee and tea. And there was only maybe one or two people at a time. And then there would be a break where nobody was here, and I would try to start to get some work done. And then mm-hmm. mostly just I, at that point, I was just keeping up with student emails in the between yeah. times. And then, and then another couple people would, you know, I think the most we ever had in the house at one time was probably was probably five of us, five or six of us. So it was kind of nice from that standpoint, a lot of time to just chat and visit and all Mm -hmm. of that. So, and it was, it was really fun. Um, It it was a good reason, like a, you know how sometimes you just need a, a a reason or a deadline. Like I had to get my decorations Mm -hmm. up that weekend because I wanted the Mm -hmm. dining room to be ready for the, for the cookie exchange. And so Mm -hmm. it just gave me a reason to buckle down and get stuff done. And, and I was glad that I had because it did, it felt very festive. Mm -hmm. So, well, for me, it was, I, I getting the tree decorated. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just spent an evening. It, it was about a week after the tree actually went up in the stand (laughs) that I finally got it decorated um, I think I did the lights one night and then the next night I put the decorations on. And so that was, um, I was on my own, but that was nice. I was fine with that. And then I think what really sort of kicked it off was I, um, made some cookies. Mm-hmm. I made three different kinds of cookies because, um, oftentimes for Christmas, I would do the, the Yule log, the Bush de Noel, mm-hmm. um, the and decorate that and make meringue mushrooms and all this stuff and that's really fun but i decided this year to make it a little bit easier on myself because that's a lot yeah um also this is ridiculous what i'm going to say but i'm for christmas eve dinner i'm doing a, a turkey breast but i'm butterflying it and then you um fill it with a herb mixture and then roll it up 
And I thought that'd be weird having a rolled up turkey and a rolled up cake. <laughs> That's nuts, right? No, actually, I think that makes good sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then, oh, and then you could have those little hors d'oeuvres where you roll the weenies in the. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you could have a whole dinner. The whole theme of the dinner is rolled up food. <laughs> yeah, prosciutto wrapped around asparagus spears. Uh -huh, you know, like, uh -huh. anyway. Yeah. I could do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I, I, I think that's, a, I think, I don't think that's weird at all. I think that makes. Perfect yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, and then the other reason I make I made cookies is um uh my friend Dave is coming for um and you know Dave, he was mm -hmm. the your wedding photographer um a million years ago. Anyway, he's coming. He always comes every Christmas Eve and he's gonna make uh chocolate ice cream. He he's kind of the the ice cream king. Yeah. Uh, he always every party I have he brings ice cream, so he's gonna bring chocolate ice cream. So I thought um I I had cookies with it. Oh, so that's what so yeah. Bottom line is just making cookies put me in the holiday spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, it just reminded me of all those years making cookies with my mom. So it was really nice. So I'm, and um, yeah, I've got decorations up a few, not a ton, but I've got up some decorations mm -hmm. and Christmas shopping's done. I'm ready just to now just cook. Um, Yay. This and, ta and tackle that turkey breast. Yeah. Yeah. I have to, um, I have to debone it, 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 and I don't. I was been watching some. I've never done that before, and so I, um, I was looking at YouTube videos, and I think it's something that I have to just set aside some time and really just <laughs> think about what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. anyway, uh, yeah. So something new for Christmas oh, Eve. That'll be so fun. yes, I'm I'm feeling festive. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I am too. We're um, well. Today, I'm kind of just laying low. Yesterday, I had some people over from work to do a meeting about, a meeting in quotation marks, about this new grading system we're using. And we've recruited a new person to try it with us. And so um, he came over yesterday and we had our little meeting with wine and food and um, lots of laughing. And, you know, so, but mm -hmm. yesterday was devoted to that you know, having people over at about one o'clock. So, so today's the first day of just like, I had a hair appointment this morning. We're recording and then I'm going to go off to the store. I think I'm going to do a little bit of shopping. I have something I want to pick up for Robert and um, I need to pick up something for the two kids, the, the niece and nephew, mm -hmm. and then I have some ideas, but I don't know for sure what I'm going to do. Um, and then I'm just like free, totally free. I could play piano all day if that's what I wanted to do. No. <laughs> I could not do that because my fingers only tolerate a, a limited amount of time on the piano. <laughs> yeah. But mm -hmm. I have I have a lot of um I have a lot of things to choose from and maybe I'll just mm -hmm. do nothing except watch bad Netflix. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah. It's now Christmas vacation officially. I have this long stretch of empty time stretching out in front of me and a lot of things I want to try to do, but I'm not going to try to do them today. Well, and you have quite a bit of time. I mean, you go back after New Year's, but like mid-January, don't you? Or Yeah, I think I want to say it's the, let me just look. I think it's the 19th of January. Yeah. We go back. Yeah, we go back the 19th of January. So I have quite a bit of okay. time. Yeah. Yeah. And there's school, there's meetings and things I need, you know, work mm -hmm. I need to do to prepare. I'm teaching a mm -hmm. class I've never taught. Well, I'm teaching a class I have not taught in what we'll call the modern era. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it's been a long time, over over 15 years since I've taught okay. statistics. And so... You know, that's going to be a job to get that ready. So it's not like I don't have things, mm -hmm. uh, you know, anybody who teaches knows that. But it does feel, it feels really good to not mm -hmm. have, um, you know, commitments, real commitments. So, and yeah. Betty's having yeah. her second eye surgery. Her first one mm -hmm. went well, and now she's 
she they had a cancellation, so she got they just slid her right into January, the first week of January. So that's exciting. And so, you know, there's there's I, I just have a lot of I have a lot to feel very happy about at the moment. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so anyway, yeah. Okay. Well, let's get into it then. Okay. Well, What's the business at hand? Yeah. Well, we're coming up on episode 200. This is episode 197. Um, mm-hmm. Over eight years of doing this podcast, yeah. which is like mind boggling to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> just mind boggling. That's like a small child. <laughs> Eight, eight years is, is you know, what, a second grader? That's third yeah. grader? I don't know. Anyway, um, 200 episodes is a lot. And most of them are mm-hmm. over an hour. So, and then there are some bonus episodes. I would just roughly estimate we have probably 240 hours of our voice out there. Oh my God, that's uh, <laughs> exhausting. And people have listened to us for <laughs> so, well, so you I can was listen g- to I, us 24 <laughs> hours a day for a hundred days. That's just yeah, no. you know, there that's something yeah. sort of mind blowing to me. I'll have to go back and listen to our first episode in preparation for episode two hundred, I think. Yeah, I should go back and listen to some of them mm-hmm. because um what we were um, saying is that our when we first started this, I said, how are we going to come up with content for five episodes, mm-hmm. 10 episodes, let alone 200? And what I was going to say, Kelly, is I don't know that we necessarily have any content. <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah. Have we really come up with content for 200 episodes? Probably not. <laughs> Well, we really haven't. We just chit chat. No, that's not true. We have come up with yeah, some content, yeah. but mm-hmm. a lot. But you know, we get a little bit of a, a um, um, an uh, excuse during the pandemic when we couldn't really go anywhere or do anything. Right. But uh, but uh, we'll we're, we'll get back to it. Real content, but anyway. Yeah. So um, yeah. So very exciting. Mm-hmm. Two hundred episodes. Mm-hmm. Didn't think it was going to happen, but. I know. Here we are, you yeah. know. So speaking of content, what we're going to do for the episode 200 is to answer listener questions. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I looked at what other people had done and sort of milestone episodes. And this is one of the things. And I thought, okay, well, let's, uh, you know, I'll check with Marcia, see what she thinks. And so we decided, yeah, let's do it. I have no idea. You probably know everything you need to know about our lives if you've listened for 200 episodes. Um, Mm -hmm. But any kind of question you have, you can, you know, about yarn, about our lives, about poodle grooming or Fibonacci (laughs) or, (laughs) you know, Uh anything. Um, And Mm -hmm. we'll do our best to answer the question. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you can send your questions to our email to use at to use fiber adventures.com. Um, the other thing that we'll do is we'll open up a Ravelry thread for questions. So mm-hmm. those of you on Ravelry can leave your questions there. Um, those of you on Instagram can DM me 100 projects and um, leave your question in, in Instagram if you want. Um, lots of ways or Marsha. Marsha is better in motion. You can, you can DM her too. Um, yeah. And we'll just collect up questions and, you know, honestly, I don't know how many there will be, um, but maybe there are some things people are curious about. Mm-hmm. Right. Maybe they've, maybe they haven't listened to all 200 and they heard us talking about spirit <laughs> yarn and they don't know what that is or, mm-hmm. or something. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what we'll be doing. Okay. On, and I don't know yeah. exactly the date of episode 200. I'm not going to look it up, but through about a month and a half to two months from now, mm-hmm. six weeks, mm-hmm. so, somewhat. Yeah. My next yeah. hair appointment, probably, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> will be the day of our 200th episode. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, we thought it would be a fun way, a fun way to celebrate. So, 
Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, Marsha. Um, yes. I will go first on our projects because I actually okay. have some knitting. Shocker. Ooh. I'm knitting something mm -hmm. and it's not a charity hat. Okay. I dug out the Detail. nativity set that my mom got us. Um, I have Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus in a manger all knitted up from mm -hmm. this kit. And mm -hmm. the name of the kit, uh, Knit Your Own Nativity. I don't know if it's in Ravelry. Create a classic Christmas scene. It doesn't seem to have. Oh, yes. Kirsty mm -hmm. McLeod, Simply Knitting Mag her is her Instagram. And she has... Um, this pattern kit that it came out a few years ago, or at least I got it a few years ago. And I made the th three main characters. They give you enough yarn. They guarantee you enough yarn to make Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus and the manger. And then it gives you patterns for an angel and kings and shepherds and sheep and a donkey. And so I'm now working on the angel. I started her robe okay. because it's just straight stockinette. For 13, well, it's it's 18 rows, but I, they have you make them all the same size. And I want the angel to be a little bit smaller. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I'm, I downsized the angel by 75%. So just okay. stocking it and I'll probably finish the robe while we're talking. But I thought this would be good. And it's on straight. I'm doing this on the needles that came with the kit, which are 3.25 millimeter wooden like bamboo needles straight needles which is odd i don't usually use straight needles so it feels a little so a little strange do you yeah i don't use straight needles very often but um do you have this in your you don't have it in your uh the new project the new part of it no i think okay. i have the original nativity in in my projects if i don't i will send a picture Okay. Because they are very cute. Now, mine don't have faces. Oh, no, here it is. Did you find here it? Here it is the original one you did, yeah. Yeah. Mine don't have faces. And I I originally left off the faces because, oh, I think Joseph maybe doesn't have his beard on yet either. Let me go back and look. I see. Um. Anyway, I was going to wait and do all the faces at the same time so that they looked similar. But he has his beard oh, okay. in the photo. Okay, but no face. No face. So I've used them several years, put them out with no faces. And I kind of like them, but my aunt always mm -hmm. reminds me about, do you remember Holly Hobby? Mm-hmm. I We had Holly Hobby stuff when I was a kid, and I really did not like the fact that like, she had no face. I think it was Holly yeah. Hobby that had no face. Um, there was one kind of character like that that was in a lot of different, and then there were like figurines and toys. And anyway, it bothered me that she didn't have a face. So my aunt teases me all the time that I haven't put faces on Joseph and Mary. So I think I will put their faces on. When I get the angel done, I'll put everybody's faces <laughs> on before I put them away for the year. Well, I was looking at the pattern uh and I'm looking at the, and at first it looked like they just had eyes, mm -hmm. but I'm looking at it more closely and they do have mouths. Yeah. So they the, kind of blend the mouth, in. The, yeah, because they're, their eyes are black. The nose is the color of their skin, mm -hmm. but the, and then their mouth is pink. So their skin, but the skin colored yeah. <laughs> yarn. The kinda, yeah. Um, the, the kind of peach color. It's just like a little bump. You just make a little bump. Mm hmm. So. I am also interested in making the sheep this yes, year. Yes, I see the sheep. It's darling. It's really cute. And so is the donkey, but I don't have the yarn to make the donkey. I think mm -hmm. I think I'll have enough of the yarn um to make the sheep. I don't know. I'll have to look. Um you know, as I'm just right now I'm just using the leftovers from from the kit and there was no gray in the original kit there might not be black in the original kit for the sheep's face i don't know mm -hmm. but anyway i well as you know i have several several more than any one person um 
who is not exactly mm -hmm. religious should have <laughs> nativities. <laughs> I just, I, I really like them. I've liked them since I was a kid and I used to, you know, move the wise men closer every day to the manger and move the sheep around. And I mostly liked the mm -hmm. animals when I was a kid, the sheep and the donkey, I'd move yeah. around the, and I've just liked them ever since. And so I have, I have a lot of them, but this is a fun one. So, and it's my only knitting project active at the moment, but I'm about two inches into the angel's robe. So how's that? That's knitting okay. content mm -hmm. from me yes. for the first time in at least a <laughs> month. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then I do have some plans um, of some things I want to make. One of them is, mm -hmm. remember when I, uh, last year at this time, well, last year in January, um, I was went on a mission to use my leftovers. And so I made that cat bed for Minnie. Mm -hmm. And it was really cute until I washed it. And then the wool all softened up, like they say, woolly wool does. And it did. Mm -hmm. And it didn't stand up anymore. So it's just oh, flat okay. on the porch. So what I'm going to do, uh -huh. I have some left. I'm going to make a like a circular, like a tube. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to put like a bumper in the bottom. Um, so it's flat and then it has, it's round and flat but then it has walls that are supposed to come up straight mm -hmm. and they fall over. And so I'm going to make a little tube that'll go in the corner, the bottom corner between the, between the um, part that, you know, the bottom part and the wall. And hopefully that oh, will right. help the walls stand up a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a plan. Yeah. I that's have leftover yarn. And when I, when mm -hmm. I finished it, I thought, should I get rid of this yarn or, and then I thought, no, I'm going to save it because I might want to put some kind of liner in there. I wasn't thinking to um, make the wall stand up. I was thinking like to make a pillow or something, mm -hmm. you know, a liner to stuff with wool and put make it softer. Uh, but mm -hmm. I think I'll just make this bumper to go around the edge and hold the walls up. So yeah, that's a good idea. So that's on my that's on my to do list, and then. Um, I'm going to also wind warp the Jane Stafford Guild, the new season. Well, the new season is coming out, and I still haven't finished two seasons ago, Lace. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm not sure if I'm going to do the last Lace one, which is called Bronson Spot, mm -hmm. or if I'm going to move on to the season that I skipped, this year's season, um, and do something called Monk's Belt. It's a weave structure. I think I might just... Okay. I've done a lot of lace, um, you know, with the lace curtains, and uh, people have heard me talking about lace a lot. So I think I might just move yeah. into the, the next season, the beginning of the next season, and do um, Monk's Belt, which I have not woven before. So that'll be kind of fun. So I think I'm going to wind a warp for Monk's Belt and mm -hmm. do at least a sampler, and maybe once I look at... Um, once I look at the paperwork for what I'm supposed to warp and watch, you know, some of her episodes and see what it's, what it looks like and what the fabric feels like, I may, I may decide to make maybe a table runner, um, for our dining room table, or maybe I will make placemats or I'm not sure what the fabric will be good for. So I'm going to have to. I'm gonna have to do a little learning before I'm ready to know what I'll make with the with the stuff that I'm gonna weave. But I'm kind of excited mm -hmm. about that. Do a new a new to me weave structure. So that'll be mm -hmm. that'll be fun. So that's in the plans for probably the week between Christmas and Christmas and New Year's. I'll do some warping. I don't know if I'll get it onto the loom or not, but I'll at least get some warps wound and have some plans. Mm-hmm. So, mm -hmm. and then good. the only last thing this morning, um, while I was getting ready for recording, I thought, oh, I'm going to look and see how many songs have I learned? How many Christmas songs have I learned? Which I think mm -hmm. also can help to contribute to my getting into the spirit. Cause I do, mm -hmm. I do like Christmas songs and 
my favorite Christmas songs are the church songs, you know, the ones you would sing in church. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, I wanted to go off on a little tangent. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in <laughs> high school, I went to catechism, you know, all through, all through starting like in first grade, I went to catechism. Mm-hmm. We, I was raised Catholic. And when I was in high school, my freshman year, I think it was, we were getting ready for confirmation. Um, they did like two years at a time. So my sister and I were both going to be going through confirmation. And so anyway, the, we had this a uh, young guy teaching my catechism class. He was the son of my science teacher, which was a little weird, but but you know, uh, he was just a he was just a fun young person. You know how when you're mm-hmm. in high school and somebody in their early twenties, like okay, that's kind of cool, you know. Mm-hmm. So we went. So he planned this thing for us to go cr- Christmas caroling. I don't know if people even do that anymore. <laughs> it'd be kind of i mean i was it's funny that you should say that because i was thinking the other day it might be kind of weird if people just came and knocked on my door and started singing like would that be weird well that's would you like people used to do that all the time <laughs> yeah right? i know but it's like mm, yeah no it's not a age. thing i don't think i it's kind of sad i I'm not even yeah. sure if younger people now even really know about christmas caroling but we would do it occasionally. Sometimes there would be people that I knew from school and we'd plan it. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes it was an organized group. Sometimes it was just a group of us thought it would be fun, you know, to go out mm-hmm. and do it. And so we did it. Um, most of the time it was an organized thing, like my 4-H club or, or like this was catechism. We did it. Anyway, getting back to my point. He was so cool. <laughs> we liked him so much. Mm-hmm. And he organized this Christmas caroling. And then we were all so annoyed with him because he wouldn't let us sing any secular Christmas songs. So mm-hmm. no Frosty the Snowman, no Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, no mm-hmm. none of that, no Jingle Bells. And we were we were like like just completely annoyed with him because that mm-hmm. was the fun stuff to sing, right? Yeah. Anyway, now that I'm older. Um, I really like those old Christmas songs, the the church Christmas songs. And mm-hmm. I found a website and they have all these all these songs. And of course they're, you know, not copyright protected because they're so old. And they have them for free as free downloads. And so I just downloaded mm-hmm. a bunch of them. So there's not I have nine songs that I'm playing. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, when I counted them up, I thought, okay, that's um, that's more than I thought. So, and mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, so I play, you know, I'll play them a couple times and then move on to the next one. So, anyway, no, I have nine Christmas songs that I'm decent at. Um, mm-hmm. My, I have a my longest song is three pa- three pages. Now you played piano, you took lessons. I don't mm-hmm. three pages feels like a really big accomplishment. A, oh yeah, a three-page Absolutely. song feels like like wow, that is so cool. I'm playing a three-page song, <laughs> mm-hmm. especially when the little kids' book that I was starting to learn with had like the songs were maybe four measures. And you're mm-hmm. done. Like, okay, I need something. I need something more adult than this. So yeah. it, it's been really good to um, get songs uh, from this place. And now I'm working on Old Lang Syne. And then I have I haven't started really playing it, but I also have Grand Old Flag. So my aunt Pat, who wants to hear all the holiday songs, <laughs> I'm getting prepared. <laughs> So she'll have, she'll get her own personal recital as the holidays, yeah. as the holidays march on through the year. So, but anyway, <laughs> so that's my, those are my shenanigans for the last little while. Okay. How about you? What are you working on? Well, I'm going to start with the bad news. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I know what this bad. Okay, everybody, news brace yourselves. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> everybody could. Everybody knows what I'm gonna probably knows what I'm gonna say when I say that. Uh, we talk about the bad news first. Okay, so Ben's sweater. Um, I the last episode, last time we recorded, I was working on the sleeves. So I finished both sleeves down to the cuff, and then I wanted him to try it on before I to make sure that they were long enough before I did the cuff. And he, I nabbed him, and he tried it on, and the sleeves are too tight from the elbow down to the cuff. Oh. So I have to, I cannot make myself pick it up. I just, yeah. Um, and I, I cannot, and it's like, I saw that and he's like, well, you know, maybe if you wash it and block it, you can stretch it out. And like, n- n- there's a, yeah. and you know, yeah. there's a little bit of ease you can get right. in there, but not that much. So yeah. I have to rip them out. It's not that far, really, but I, it was very disheartening, and again, I had to just set it down and take the dog for a walk and go make Christmas cookies. <laughs> That's what I <laughs> I had to like. I cannot deal with this at all right now, yeah. and I because I really thought it was all I had to do was those cuffs, weave in the ends, wash and block it, and then he could have it for Christmas. That was the plan. Mm-hmm. He's not getting it for Christmas. Um. And I really wanted to move on to my next project, and I had it all, which I will talk about in a second, the January blanket, which I wanted to start, um, because uh, Kim and I were supposed to go to down to the Oregon coast. Um, it was at Boxing Day, January, uh, sorry, December 26th, and come home on the 30th. But just a side note, she contracted, she has COVID. Mm-hmm. So she's not coming Christmas clearly, or Christmas Day, and the the beach trip has been canceled. We're going to see if we can schedule it for some time in January. But I was just going to work on that blanket down there, just something mindless. Yeah. That is... mm-hmm. So now I – so we're not going between Christmas and New Year's, so I think I'm going to make myself rip it out and re-knit those between Christmas and New Year's. That's yeah. my plan. Start your and start my, your 2023 without that over your head. I think that's a yes, I have very to, smart idea. And I also yes, and I also I, I I have to get it off the needles, but I just thought I cannot pick it up. Yeah. I just have to take a little bit of a break. And my other thing I want to get it done too because another motivator to get it done is the two knitlet chicks are having their um their contest where you have to, to complete a sweater oh, yeah. by um, January 15th. And I put, I entered my, um, the happiness sweater. And so I think I'm going to submit, my goal is to finish my unhappiness sweater. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's funny. <laughs> um, I, but it, I think the deadline is January 15th. Oh, so, okay. um uh, don't quote me on that. I think yeah. that's what it is. People can check out their Ravelry group. Uh, but I want to get it done so I can – that's a good goal. Right. To finish it so I can get it into that. Um, their, um, <laughs> some, yeah. Anyway. The happiness uh, sweater and the unhappiness sweater. <laughs> Oh my goodness! And I, you know, the thing is that this pattern, the designer, it's Karen Alfke, and it's the unpattern where you, and I don't know, it's, I did all the math correctly, you know. So mm-hmm. for the sleeve, you know, if you have this many stitches under the arm, and you want to have the sleeve this size down at the cuff, how many decreases you should do? And I did that, but it's a, it doesn't. I did it exactly as the math said, but. It's way too tight. So, yeah. I don't know if it's me, the pattern, the combination of me and the yarn. uh, I I don't know what my problem is. I do sometimes feel like, uh, well, you know, we've talked endlessly about too tight sleeves on sweaters. But Mm -hmm. some of it, I think, from from my, on on my part, is, is me. Because I do think my mm-hmm. gauge is different on the small knitting in the round mm-hmm. of a sleeve as compared to the larger knitting in the round of a sweater or the knitting flat of a swatch. Yeah. 
And so that's true because I'm doing the sleeves on magic loop, and that could be just mm-hmm. it's, it's as it gets. Yeah, it just it's a different gauge, right? You're you're knitting mm-hmm. it differently, so it's a little bit different gauge, and so that could be part of it. Um, and then you know the other thing is is that is that um, I I know that the sweater is not is supposed to be you know either gender. It's just based on measurements, but like I mean. Did you really? You didn't really measure his forearms, right? You just knew what you wanted it to be at the end, and so that to, decreased- to your point exactly. Yeah. You you don't measure every what, you, what you're really doing is the okay. I'm going to go on the record and saying this is not Karen Elfke's fault yeah. at all. Right? It's really me because there's a a, a lot of factors. Is I was measuring a sweater that is not that is not a raglan sleeve sweater. It was basically a square with two mm-hmm. rectangles sticking off of it as right. sleeves. So it's completely the wrong type of sweater that I was measuring. I had his chest measurement, and I measured from like his neck down. She tells you tells you to take certain measurements, right. mm-hmm. but it's not like those. Um, do you remember the Amy Herzog computer program mm-hmm. where you had all these different measurements all down your arm yeah. and. Uh, it wasn't. She had that a very particular elaborate. way of measuring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was not that elaborate, Be- and I think the reason Karen's pattern doesn't need all of that is you keep trying it on, right? <laughs> as you go along, mm-hmm. and as we've talked about, I did not have his body, so I with me. So I think um, uh, if I should have taken more measurements before I started, uh, that I could refer back to. Um, as opposed to just the measurement she has you take Mm -hmm. to start the sweater. And then I was thinking I would probably do this pattern again with hand spun for myself where I could keep checking myself as I'm knitting it. And this, I'm knitting the whole sweater before I can really get a chance for him to try it on because so that's a disaster. That's just like a disaster. That's not going to work. I mean, to be fair to the pattern designer, Mm Mm-hmm. Hand yes. spun is another whole variable to put into the mix. Yes. Yes. Um, it's, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, well, I want you done with this. <laughs> I'll just I, say it. Everybody done. wants me done with this sweater, <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> everybody's sick of hearing about this sweater. Because you know when I cast it on? Mm -hmm. I look back. I cast it on last December when we had this huge snowstorm. And there's a picture of me. And you couldn't come down and visit. I couldn't come down and visit. And so uh, it was like I was supposed to leave to visit you January – I keep saying January – December 26th. And we had this huge storm. And then so I just went home and I thought, okay, I'm going to just cast on that sweater. And it was the – the Franco sweater I was mm-hmm, going to do. Mm-hmm. And that didn't work out so, because, again, not Franco, but my uh, uh, pat, my yarn. Yeah. So, so this um, sweater started out with disappointment. This is just an unhappy it's an- sweater. <laughs> <laughs> it is not yes, sparking because- <laughs> any kind of joy. <laughs> right, because, I mean, really, when you think about it, when you started it, that was very disappointing that you weren't able to come down, right? It, oh, yeah, the whole thing. You were happy just... to start it. You were excited to start it, but you were mm-hmm. – but it baked into that beginning was unhappy that you weren't able to take a trip that you had planned and packed, right? Yes, I had the car loaded. I got – do you remember? Because I, I, yeah. I've talked about this, but I actually got in the car, went to the gas station – when started going down the on ramp to the freeway, and all the cars were just stopped, and everybody's out of their cars. Yes, and I literally just looked behind me and backed up the on ramp <laughs> and went home. I was safe; yeah. there was nobody there, but I just backed up the on ramp and I went home. Yeah. Uh, so yes, it all started out with just disappointment. So and and uh, yeah, no, enough okay. of that. I will. Um, I I think I'm gonna. F- that's my plan after Christmas. Just there won't not I won't be at the beach. There yeah. won't be that much to do. I'm just gonna, um, yeah. Okay. So enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> People don't need this bad juju while I, uh, right during the holidays. That's right. Okay. So 
I did do, so the last time we recorded, I had done a swatch for the January blanket, which is my next project. And I'm using my hand spun, the Manx Lochten. <laughs> it's a three ply air and weight. I have a little over 1400 yards. And we did have a conversation, I think after we recorded about the math mm-hmm. um, to with my gauge. And so I decided to, the, the, together we decided to uh, cast on an extra 15 stitches for the pattern repeat. So um, I don't know how many pattern repeats I have going across, but I just cast, I'm doing one extra Mm -hmm. pattern repeat. So I cast on 192 stitches and I did go up in needle size. I'm doing nines instead of the eighths. And I have knit about 13 inches. It's really pretty. Maybe more. And I, I love it. I am not going to say what I said about the other yarn right. I was knitting with. <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> I'm not going to tempt the universe. But I love the color. Um, it's kind of um, mocha colored, kind mm-hmm. of. Uh, yeah. Like a latte like colored. A, it's mm-hmm. uh, more, yeah. Or like when I make tea and put milk in it. It's sort mm-hmm. of that color. I like it. Um, and it's, uh, I'm, I'm really glad I'm making a blanket and not a sweater out of this. Um, cause I, I love the yarn, but it's not, it's definitely nothing you would want to have, you know, like a scarf or a hat right. out of it. Um, a sweater would be okay. So anyway, that's been really pleasurable. I, um, um, I'm enjoying knitting on this and I think that's been really just um, very, I'm going to use this term, healing, uh, after my, the other project that I've been talking about, just to, to like, I can, I actually can knit and I actually am a relatively competent knitter because mm-hmm. the, mm-hmm. my, the others, the other project has been kind of debilitating. Um, so that's been fun anyway. And then the other thing too, I, my next project I think is, um, another blanket. So I, um, I've been trying to figure out what to give my brother for Christmas um, because he said he really doesn't need anything. None of us need anything. Mm -hmm. And, but Kelly, do you remember uh, when you were up here uh, that September and we dyed all the yarn for um, the garter squish? And the whole reason why I was dyeing that yarn Overnight, as I was going to make a blanket that he had seen down in Portland. Yes. At a yarn shop down there. And we, and do you remember what we were laughing about? How we remembered it so completely differently. Yeah. yeah. And my brother, my brother does, I believe, I really believe he does have a photographic memory. He remembered the pattern when I actually found the pattern. He remembered exactly as. <laughs> <laughs> the way he described it and not the way I remembered it at all. So I was walking the dog. This is when I do my great thinking is when I was walking the dog and I thought I need to just buy him that yarn to make the blanket that he really wants. Nice. So I went over to the yarn shop near me and they were having their, you know, that shop small Saturday sale. So mm-hmm. I got 20% off. And so the blanket I'm going to make him is called Noromania. And I bought 18 skeins of Noro Curion. It's air and weight yarn. And I, you, the, the idea is that is you're supposed to use up scraps. Or, and, of course, I have no scraps of that yarn, so I just bought the yarn. And um, you, you could, I just picked one of every color. <clears throat> I think there was three that I got two colors of. And I'm just going over here, and I'll tell you the... Um, um, I'm a little late getting the, I didn't put this in the note. So I just want to tell you who the store, it's a close knit in Portland is the, um, you go to their website and they posted this pattern. I don't know how many years ago, but it's a free pattern. And the designer is Adrian Tory. And basically all you do is you just alternate skeins mm-hmm. uh, and do garter stitch the whole way. Um, And then it makes kind of these long stripes. And so every row is a different color. Right. Um, I mean, it it repeats. So 
um, I'll put a link in the show notes to the pattern. Yeah, I just but linked it's just, it. And it. It's that is okay. They have a really pretty picture of it on the show mm-hmm. notes page, and because mm-hmm. it's such a long repeat, even if the color changes in the middle of the row, you don't really notice it. It looks like every yeah. row is a different color. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to. Uh, I, so I bought the yarn. I'm going to box up and give it to him with the pattern. Um, and then I'm going to cast this on for him. And it should go pretty fast because it says, uh, I think you use size eight. But depending on my knitting, I I might go up a size. We'll yeah. see. I'll do a swatch yeah. and then figure out um, how big I'm going to make it. Because I would say the pattern is... Um, it's more like a recipe because mm-hmm. basically you just cast on how many stitches you want and do garter stitch. I did read some of the project pages and some people actually did, um, did I say garter squish? Garter stitch. Uh, I did look at some of the projects and some people have done the like the garter squish, garter squish blanket where you slip the first three stitches to get oh, that yeah. edge. That I nice like that edge. edge and I was, yeah. And I was thinking I might do that, Mm -hmm. but it's a, it's a really cool pattern. It just, it's super, and I just think it'll be really fun. Um, Yeah. You know. I'm even, um, I'm looking through some of the finished projects and it looks like some people didn't alternate skeins either. Like they might've alternated when they first started the yarn. mm -hmm. Um, That's not what Mark wants. I I know. Um, But yeah. There are a couple of blankets where it looks like maybe they alternated when they first started the new ball, like alternated for a couple of rows. And then they just mm-hmm. um, yeah, did the – because it's more like – it's not color blocked because Noro changes colors. But it's mm-hmm. it's like blocks of similar. And then it fades mm-hmm. into a different – kind of colorway and then fades into a different colorway. It's an interesting Yeah. It's it's a really interesting look. The 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 yarn, the way the yarn is made gives this mm-hmm. a few different looks when you look at the pattern, you know, the project pages. Yeah. It's interesting cuz there's also one here um uh let's see. Who is the person? I don't know if you can see this one. It's uh, Bag by uh, Bag by Lang. Um, this knitter has just used two colorways and alternated the whole way. And you would not, looking at the pictures, now it's all sort of in cool colors, mm-hmm. blues and, and cool reds. Um, but you would, looking at that, you would not know that was just two colorways. Yeah. Um, it's interesting to look at these. And then... Um, I noticed there's one here that's mostly, um, okay, here, let me look at this other one. This is very interesting podcasting, I know, and I'm just looking at these. <laughs> yeah, another person just used two colorways mm-hmm. um, for the whole thing. And I think, and they're they're beautiful, you yeah, know. They're, um, there's, um, it's interesting. They all look alike, but, I mean, you can tell it's mm-hmm. the same pattern, but it is interesting, the different looks that you get by by either just using two colorways or using many colorways mm-hmm. or how they alternate. Yeah. No, really, really interesting and fun project, I think. It, and um, I, it's something that I'm going to give a person that I don't – but it's not a sweater. Right. Mm-hmm. I will not be fitting it to anybody's body. Nope. Whatever <laughs> size it comes out. That's the size it is. It will, it will be fitted to the back of the sofa. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, there's something very nice about um, blankets for that very reason. You just mm-hmm. get to just knit and not have to worry about shaping or sizing or trying it on or any of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's going to be a fun project, Marsha. Yeah. And then I'm just going to just say I bought the yarn at Acorn Street Yarn here in Seattle. And um, I, the other thing I bought, because I thought it was so clever, is little tags that you can attach to, that you tie on to your project, like hang tags, like on clothing, mm-hmm. that says, you know, who it's for, who made it, and then and then also the washing instructions, oh, care nice. instructions. Mm-hmm. 
Um, that's on the back, but on the front it says this knitting project brought brought to you by Netflix. <laughs> 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 I think I, so. I bought those because I think um, that's not untrue right, in my right. case. <laughs> uh, oh so my anyway, gosh. well, that's cool. So uh, yeah, so that's it for me for projects. Okay. Yeah. So one that is close to being finished, one that's just starting, and then one that will be a Christmas present and start after Christmas. Right. I mean, that's the intention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'll finish the I, I can cast it on and just get it ready to go, but I will try and finish this other my um January blanket first before I actually start knitting mm-hmm. it. But uh that's kind of the plan. But anyway. That'll be nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well I've moved on. We won't from- talk we won't talk though about um I'm laughing about casting on things though. We won't talk about the skull, the <laughs> rabbit. The um, what else do I have that are all in my? They have the the whip attachment to them. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I have I have a doily. I I put last year when I organized things, I put them into project bags. Well, I didn't have very many. I had this kit. I have a doily, and I have something else that I can't remember what it is. And then I have the um, that vest with the mohair. The mohair vest that I recently started. I mean, Mm -hmm. it hasn't been going that long. Um, But the doily's been hanging around for a while. And I think I might get that out, too. I'm kind of in the mood for something a little more challenging and less mindless. We'll see. I might change my mind about about that. I might just get Mm -hmm. um, inspired and do the whole rest of this kit who knows i have moved on from the body of the angel's robe to an angel sleeve now (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) there's one thing these are very gratifying they go quickly but you have to sew them together you know there's pieces fiddly fiddly pieces to do so but anyway i think that we both have some plans yeah, we do. So, um, and then we have one other thing we want to talk about. Yeah, we um, wanted to thank our patrons, and we didn't we didn't do this. We've done this in the summer, um, in previous years, and we we didn't do it this summer. And I was just thinking um, about it, and so Marsha and I decided we wanted to do our Patreon pattern giveaway. So, um, we have. Uh, our patrons on Patreon um, who have been supporting the podcast, some of them for many, many years, which we really appreciate. Um, and so in order to thank them um, and, and for their support of the show and their support of the community, really, because mm-hmm. instead of like some Patreon accounts, they do special things for their patrons, like content only for their patrons and so on. For us, we've never, that's not the model that we have. Um, people who contribute are contributing for the good of everybody, right? For mm-hmm. all of the regular shows that we put out. <laughs> the regular non-content. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, um, we wanted to just give them thanks and appreciation for their generosity. Um so we are giving a free pattern to all of our Patreon pa- Patreon patrons. Um, that's a little too much alliteration. <laughs> I'm having trouble <laughs> <laughs> with the tongue twisterness of that. Uh, but a, a pattern of their choice up to ten dollars. Um, patterns on Ravelry that I can, uh, you know, get through download um, are are what I have in mind. But there are there have been patterns that people have wanted that they've gotten in touch with me and we figured out a way um, to make that work. So if you, if you aren't getting mm-hmm. your patterns on, on Ravelry, you still, um, you still can't participate in this. So mm-hmm. uh, send us a message either through Ravelry um, or um, in, uh, Instagram or the email address, same as what I mentioned before, to use at to use fiber um, Get in touch, patrons, and let us know what pattern you would like, and we'll. 
put that into your pattern library for you. Mm -hmm. It's always fun to see what people choose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we appreciate everybody. Appreciate everybody's support. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. and we like the opportunity to to provide additional support to pattern designers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if if there's a pattern you missed, if you were doing the indie gift along and you, missed out on a pattern um you know you have an opportunity to get this pattern free so just let us know and if you want to become a patron uh, it's patreon.com forward slash to use t-w-o-e-w-e-s and we have several tiers there that you can select from on our patreon page our link to our patreon page is always in our show notes at the very top so you can find that if you're mm-hmm. interested in in helping to support the podcasting fees and the mailing um the you know m- mailing charges and all of that so mm-hmm. yeah all right anything else okay. marcia uh just to mention again the winter weave along is underway still and it ends March 31st, so there's still lots of time. Mm-hmm. And I will have content, Kelly, because I'm going to take my cl- my weeding oh, class that's at right. the end of January. Yeah, so yeah. I will have some content, some actual, like, legitimate, serious content. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So January, our first January episode, the, our next episode will probably be pretty weaving heavy because I will hopefully mm-hmm. have done some weaving, too. Well, that'll yeah. be good. Yeah. That'll be good. Hope yeah. we don't bore the knitters, but you know, I think weaving's interesting. Yeah, really. I think knitting is, or weaving is interesting to people, even mm-hmm. if you don't weave. Yeah. The idea yeah. is interesting. Yeah. So. All right. So I think that's it. Okay. So um, I would just say, I think this is, we will not talk until after the new year. So I'm just going to say happy holidays to all yeah. of our listeners. Mm-hmm. And um, happy new year. Stay safe. Stay relaxed. Stay, stay peaceful. And try to stay warm. We'll it's the- going to be very cold across the country in the U.S. This yes, week. I. It's very cold here in Seattle. I woke, uh, took Enzo out this morning, and it was 19 degrees, which is very cold for Seattle. Yeah. That's not so cold in other parts of the world, but um, for us, that's cold. Yeah. So, and we have a lot of snow and ice. Uh, yeah, I was surprised to right see now, all your so. snow pictures. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, we'll talk in the new year. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>
Thank you so much for listening. To subscribe to the podcast, visit 2usefiberadventures.com. Join us on our adventures on Ravelry and Instagram. I am Better in Motion and Kelly is 100 Projects. Until next time, we're the 2us doing doing our our part part for World Fleece. Fleece.